What's up, wrestling fans? Massive drama going on when it comes to Ryback and Pat Buck. Now, many of you may have wondered why I went into the whole Ryback situation, Pat Buck situation, last night on my YouTube. It's from two years ago. Why did you do that, Joe? The fact of the matter is, the reason why I did that is because from the very beginning, the, the, the beef with me and Ryback was bullshit. From the very beginning. But forget all that, the beef that I have with him. We'll talk about that way later. Right now, what we need to talk about is the actual beef going on. Pat Buck and Ryback started a podcast, and they were the ones doing the podcast. My producer at the time um, was reaching out to them, and they gave us figures. And, and we found out later on that Pat Buck was the one we were communicating with. We always thought it was Ryback that we were communicating with, and then we realized, okay, it's Pat Buck or it's someone handling him. We always wondered why it was going to cost thousands of dollars to get Ryback on the show. That pissed us off because we're a small show, pretty much, but, you know, thousands of subscribers, hundreds of thousands of views, more than Ryback's podcast back then, whatever the case is. Ryback, you know, or Pat Buck were apparently responded with these amounts of money that were insane. Um... That prompted me to like rib Ryback on Twitter because people were begging me to get Ryback on the show. And we said, listen, we got maybe like 200 bucks or something like that. They wanted thousands of dollars. So that was like, wow, how the hell are we going to pay Ryback thousands of dollars to be on a podcast? We're not going to do that. Um, oh, well. So when people would ask me to still, can we still going to get Ryback on? Can we please get Ryback on the show? I would respond with stuff like, yeah, if you have a million dollars and 10,000 pounds of chocolate or a golden Camaro, or yeah, if you have seven hookers and a fucking something. And I would say all this bullshit to people. And one time I threw out a figure that was close to the to the real figure that they wanted, which was like $2,000 or thousands. i am like, yeah, if we get a couple thousand dollars, we'll get Ryback on the show. Well, Ryback heard that and then went on to flip out. But all the all the questions about why 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 were we getting asked th for thousands of dollars to have Ryback on a podcast, and all these questions may have been answered by Ryback himself, because on his podcast or his YouTube channel Ryback TV, which I will graciously promote, despite the fact that Ryback never ever wants to promote me, even though I didn't do anything really, other than be involved in a miscommunication, and now have been vindicated because everybody, all the people that said I was a piece of shit for what I did, now you see the truth that they really did want thousands of dollars and all these crazy things for a podcast because he throws the guy who ran his email and everything else who just got signed by WWE, Pat Buck, under the bus. And not only does he throw Pat Buck under the bus, but Ryback also called WWE to warn them about Pat Buck. Pat Buck got hired by the WWE. Ryback calls them to be like, hey, you hired a dickhead, just so you know. Holy shit, it's saucy in here. And, and, I told, and I told and I talked to the higher ups and people at WWE, and I told them straight up, you got to watch out for this guy. And I know John Laurinaitis likes him, but he is as big of a piece of shit that there is human being wise. And from stealing from his grandmother and the shit with his father, let alone in the shit stealing from me. So I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and point blank tell everybody what happened. Because you can Martin, Martin Luther King it all day long where you turn the other cheek. But Martin Luther King also got fucking shot dead. So And he's making money off of me the entire time. So when he, that all happens, I choose not to talk about it on the show because I think it's just bullshit. I know he's going to want attention. And I'm not going to fucking give it to him because nobody's going to remember him at the end of the day as time goes on. He decides to go start up his own show weeks later and again this is a testament to the kind of human being that he is and the first show he goes on to and he i'm an asshole my ego is out of control no facts based on anything but one week he's totally fine now all of a sudden i have all these issues with me that that were never ever an issue until he got called out for stealing so and again i didn't acknowledge anything um He'd been fronted, set $3,000 in ad money for the show for one of our sponsors that I gave him up front. He's got hired for whatever he was, a producer, I don't know, in WWE. And he was in on two backstage little things. Do you think the dirt sheets are writing who that random guy that nobody knows is? It happens to have all his credentials on it. 
Or do you think that maybe that guy wrote that up and sent it to his buddy and puts it out? And they got to be very careful having that guy in their meetings because he will do things for money 100% on the back end and, and information will get leaked out. Am I going to say 100% he's going to do that? I can't say for sure because it has. he's done it though in the past all leading up throughout developmental and put shit out all the way up through knowing me. We had our, I got him when I left WWE and we had the idea of doing the podcast the first thing was, and it was my show, he put the, the show in his name. That was the beginning of, of where things got really weird and lied to me for over a year about it because what he was hoping was that I would go back to WWE and he'd had a podcast before. He wanted me to go. He didn't know the injuries even though I told him how hurt I was. He, In his mind, if I go back to wrestling, he would then have my following and the show was in his name and he could change the show to whatever he wanted and do another wrestling show and whatnot. So that was the first thing. The falling out happened, Raj, uh, when he was, I had him on the show, but he was booking uh, everything for me, getting 10% of everything. So he would do his Wrestle Pro shows, and we had a set fee for me on everything on that. And I would never, he would never ask me to do his shows. He would just book me on his shows, and it was the same wow. payout for all of those. Well, towards the end, he did two final shows. And me and him started, I already was seeing things. He started doing handling my wrestling bookings on another email, not the one that I could actually see. And we were having problems with people, uh, payouts on the show and whatnot. But it happened, I happened to catch him towards the end. He was keeping money from switching over to mid-roll. So that's where Ryback basically talks about the fact that he was keeping money, he was having weird payouts. He says he was taking money from Ryback. This could explain why we were we were told Ryback would be thousands of dollars for his podcast. And when I balked at that on Twitter, um, then Ryback would go on to say like, oh, you know, this Joe Cronin guy's a lying piece of shit. Now, I had also tweeted out that Ryback wanted millions of dollars in gold and all kinds of goofy stuff that was clearly a joke. Because I am a comedy show. We're joking here. But... That was serious, and then Ryback denied it and said we were crazy, to which I realized, well, there's nothing I can do to, you know, to really defend against that, uh, you know. But, you know, I, I always didn't really exactly know what went on with, with my producer and Ryback's people. I never 100% knew what was going on. I knew what my producer had told me at the time, the guy that was producing my stuff. I knew what was going on at the time in a way, but I, I really didn't know 100% what, what was being said you know, by Ryback and by everybody else. And now, after hearing this, I totally get what happened. Ryback had this guy doing all his bookings, which ha often happens in wrestling, where a former famous wrestler or somebody who was successful has like some new guy doing his work for him, you know, helping him out type of thing on the back end. And... You know, what what you're seeing here is that person uh, uh, basically taking advantage of somebody like Ryback. And that that's that's what you're seeing. Like, there's no way around that. And I, and I don't know wh what else could be said about that. Oh, boy. There's a guy on Twitter, I guess, named Joe Cronin who's telling people that I want $2,000 to do his radio show. I don't know who he is or what his show is, um, but I've done a lot of interviews, and I don't, I don't remember ever asking for $2,000 for an interview. So, so uh, do not believe everything you see. It's sad that there's people out there that try to make you look bad. But myself and Pat are going to actually be talking tonight a little bit about... I don't need to... I don't... But actually exposed it's sad that your guy told me that and then I repeated that and then you called me a liar and slandered me everywhere and you guys would go on to literally you would go on with the guy the very guy who said this and slander me that I said this that I lied about you that I lied about something I didn't lie about anything that's what happened and now you're all seeing that I was right and that he did ask for thousands of dollars. And here's the other thing. I'm a, you know, it's it's all come to fruition. It's all come to, it's so it was always Pat Buck now. This whole entire time, we thought it was, oh, Joe Cronin's a scumbag, all this other stuff. But no, it was 
it was your guy who did this. But did I ever get an email from Ryback to talk about this? Did I ever get a message from Ryback to talk about this? No. Never got a sorry or, hey, guess what? I figured it out. It wasn't you, Joe Cronin, who I walked up to Ryback at WrestleCon to shake his hand, to say sorry. And then he told me to be a better person with my life. But then the next day told me I should die in a pet of spikes. So who really is the liar and who's the good person? It's really hard to tell if Ryback's the asshole, if Pat Buck is the asshole, or if I'm the asshole. It's really hard to tell between all of these people. I do a comedy show. I'll say funny stuff, but I'll also shake your hand and apologize. And if you want to bury the hatchet, I will. Now, I've, I've reached out several hundred times to Ryback to try to squash this off the air, privately, whatever. He never responds to almost anything unless it's negativity. Pat Buck, apparently, is the potentially the cause of this entire thing. And he's never ever mentioned that whatsoever. You're a fucking fan. And I wanted to see you do You've never done this. And there's shit people like you that do this shit. Hey, there's Pat. Ask anybody that fucking knows me. There's Pat. I would never in a million years go and disrespect another human being like that. Yeah. Hmm. I would never do that. I like the Brooklyn Brawler just doing so good. <laughs> so everything's peaceful and there would be waves of uh and the fans come in waves, it'll be busy for twenty minutes, slow down for five, yeah. busy for another ten. And uh Mike Johnson came over and I don't believe you guys were met before. No. And he, you know, he's like, oh, is when our buddy that this guy that is online and from the pod from his show comes up to my to me at the table. Yeah. And uh, I'm looking at him. I, I like because I knew what the guy's face looked like. And I'm thinking, like, where do I know this guy from? And I go, hey. And uh, he then tells me his name and like instantly just. The, I, think I saw the marker close like you put the cap. Yeah. The down. whole. The entire demeanor changed right then and there because it was like, hey, buddy, because I didn't know who he was. And then like, oh, and then it, yeah, the entire mood kind of changed. And uh, because obviously you can't, there's not going to be any physicality. And um, (laughs) as much as I've told you, the pit of spikes, death to these certain people that, that, you know, the thoughts that go through the head. But obviously we, we cannot conduct those sorts of activities in society today do you want to explain the pit of spikes i don't know if people have a visual of i think mortal kombat esque like i am thinking just more just you know very early man days you know the 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 roman gladiator days you know the kings and queens and just the pit of spikes that uh death by spike and uh there's certain people in this world that you just look at that but you just want to throw down that fucking pit of spikes <laughs> and uh, you would be doing the world a good favor, Dexter style. But they uh, saw him. But obviously I get angry and then calm down. So I, I think we're starting to see here what's going on. I think I think we're finally understanding this after what three what two years later? This was April third, two thousand seventeen at WrestleCon. And again, I have nothing but respect for Ryback. Clearly, there was a miscommunication from the very beginning, right? Like, I'm not this person. Like, apparently, I'm I'm probably not even as big of a scumbag as Pat Buck is. If if Ryback looks at all of this now, you know, because, like, the, the story is very simple. I asked Ryback to be on the show. They emailed me back wanting thousands of dollars. I then tried to tweet him. And then I then I would tweet about how Ryback wanted millions of dollars to be on the podcast, and he wanted two thousand dollars, and he wanted chocolate, he wanted golden cars and Cadillacs, which was a joke. Then he made that Instagram video I played earlier, where he said I'm a big liar and scumbag. But now we know that I'm not a liar. That Pat Buck was probably asking for that extra money, um, and so then. I try to say sorry to Ryback. He blocks me on Twitter so that I can't even communicate with him to tell him I'm sorry. So then I email Ryback on email again. But obviously, Pat Buck was receiving those emails and not Ryback. So Pat Buck just trashed those emails, never told Ryback that I apologized. This all makes sense now. My apologies and my explanation emails never got to Ryback because Pat Buck probably deleted them. 
So now, uh, so now a friend of mine calls into my show as Ryback, joking around, pretending to be him, making fun of him and stuff like that. So then I decide, let me try one more time to explain to Ryback what happened and why this is ridiculous. So at WrestleCon, I go up to Ryback and I say sorry and I try to explain, like, this is what my producer told me. I'm sorry. I, I got rid of my producer because of this. I fucking fired my producer, two of two people, because of this situation that apparently now according to Ryback a few days ago on his podcast is is Pat Buck's fault is his guy's fault so I go up to Ryback to apologize and I do apologize to Ryback but I'm a little bit off because he was cutting a promo but I was letting him go because I understand why Ryback is upset listen again I respect Ryback I like Ryback I'm I've been trying to to do something with him for years. I would have been willing to go on Ryback's show as Billy Jones, a fake name, so that I could have talked to him about this. So I go up to Ryback, apologize. He tells me I need to be better on my platform, be a better person, be a better human, don't talk about him and do these threats, calling him a pussy and all these things, um, which obviously he's not a pussy. Like I mean, no one thinks that. But it's a comedy show. It's Howard Stern-like. I mean, I don't know if that's to understand. So anyway, Ryback then says, um, I should never talk about people like that. I should be a good example, all these type of things. Then the next day, as you just heard, he says he thought about how I should be dead in a pit of spikes, how he wanted to hurt me. But, you know, obviously there's going to be no physicality. You know, like he was thinking about actually maybe hurting me over something his producer did, clearly, um, and anyway, and here we are all these, all these years later, and now he's explaining that all of this was Pat Buck's fault. Where they were cutting him the checks because he was in charge of doing the, some of this stuff with that, as I was on the other half. And I found out through mid-roll that he was keeping some money without telling me about it. And from the moment I first met that guy back in Louisville, Kentucky, he used to steal from grocery stores. He would steal protein shakes, protein bars, weird things, just little things, but I always justified it. Well, he doesn't have a lot of money. He doesn't have a lot of money. There was another situation where he lived with me in Tampa, Florida. He has his grandmother's. Now, let, let, me, just, let me just explain. Ryback cuts into this for like about 14 minutes on his podcast. If you want to hear that, and if Ryback sees this video, Ryback, I'm promoting you now. Okay, I'm doing the right thing. I'm not playing the whole clip. 14 minutes of this. I'm only playing you these pieces. So do the right thing. If you want to hear it, go to Ryback's YouTube channel, Ryback TV. I put the link in the description box down below. Tell Ryback Joe Cronin sent you, whatever you want to do. But that is the facts. This is what's happened. I can't I can totally believe this. I always knew something was wrong and weird about the emails that we had gotten allegedly from Ryback or from his producer guy or Pat Buck or whoever it was. We don't really know who all these people were. And now we've also <laughs> found out that Ryback reaches reaches out to WWE to tell them don't hire this guy. Unbelievable stuff. So there's so much salt and drama and real life shit going on. So Pat Buck has to be pissed off that Ryback is reaching out to his employer to try to get him fired. Ryback has to be pissed off that Pat Buck stole money from him and apparently is a scumbag. I have to be pissed off because Ryback hates my guts all because apparently his friend Pat Buck was a liar and tried to rip me off too. And here we all are, mind-fucked over this whole situation. Anyway, that's all I can stomach on this. What do you all think about this? Leave it in the comments down below. Holy shit, this is a bombshell. And thanks to JD uh, for the video, uh, WrestleCon, uh, that he uh, subvertedly took. <laughs> Full-on subterfuge from, from JD on that uh, video. Um, but just incredible stuff and crazy weird shit. And this is the world, man. This is the world. I, I am still, uh, I reached out to my, my little buddy over there, Chris Van Vliet, and tried to tell him, you know, Hey, can you tell Ryback? Like whatever. Cause I just hate when stuff lingers and, and, you know, Ryback still thinks that I'm some scumbag and I'm, I'm still to this day trying to explain to Ryback. This is what happened. I'm telling you something is fucked. By the way, if, 
I, I mean, like, apparently Ryback knew about this all along. But that's what I was trying to reach out to Ryback with years ago, which w was to say, dude, something's up. Because look at the emails I have. Something weird is going on here. Between my producer and your guy, somebody is lying about something, and it's weird. And I, and I was trying to tell him that two years ago, but I was probably emailing his producer, Pat Buck, not him. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I will see you tonight for the SmackDown review and more. Interesting. If you guys like what you see, like I said, you can listen to the his full video 14 minutes down below. Uh, you can go to his YouTube channel and check it out or his iTunes. Conversation with the big guy. Uh, you can also get shell-shocked. Uh, all, all that stuff that Ryback offers in his Amazon account below. And uh, hit me up on Twitter at CorruptedPod if you have any questions. Email me, Show at yahoo.com, and I'll see you tonight.